drive was huge just to come out, march down the field, and pick it right up where we left off last week. Uh, we were afraid there might be a little bit of a letdown since we were so incredible the week before, but uh, we didn't see any signs of that. And, um, you know, defensively we were dominant again. Our kids, you know, have a burr up their saddle from last week. They didn't like the way they played, so I had a feeling they were going to have a little energy, and they did. And we were very solid in the kick game as well. So it was by far the best game we played in all three phases. And uh, really, really proud of my kids. You know, this was a big game. And a lot of pressure on those kids. Um, the city done a wonderful job, everybody has, about trying to get people in the Alamo Dome. And those kids understand the pressure. And uh, that, that's a lot on young men. Uh, they, they, they feel like they're carrying the, the weight of the city in a way. And they didn't, let them, they didn't even bother them at all. They came out and played as good as I've seen them play. And I hope the fans are happy. I know I was. Good, JJ. Jeff, the defense pitched a shutout today, a pretty dominant performance from them. Just how can you summarize what they did today? You, you used the word, and I agree with you, JJ, just dominant. Uh, we, were, we were physical. We were striking. And uh, we just you know, they tried to run power and ISO at us, and we handled that. They tried to be empty and do some things, spread us out, and we handled that. Our kids were just, they were dominant. Uh, I'm not stealing your word there, but it was, it was fun to watch. And uh, it's not easy to do. And our locker room's subdued in there right now. I'm like, hey man, it's hard to win in college football. We, we, can, we cannot not enjoy winning. Uh, they're just, it's just different with those kids right now. They, they expect to go out and win. Jeff, you talked about how many close games you guys have played the last two years. Was it important to make any kind of a statement to come out and have one be this decisive? Uh, I, you know, it just it was a lot more fun and easy to coach. I know that. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's stressful because, you know, you're trying to sub out people and you don't want to get anybody hurt. And then there's punt return issues and kickoff return and kickoff. And you've got starters playing out there. and you pull. It's easy to pull them off of defense and offense, but then you forget all the ramifications of all the special teams they're on. You're trying to do that, so I'd much rather have those problems to answer your question. Uh, but as far as statement and all that, you know, I don't know. That's stuff you guys probably like to talk about. I, I'm just glad we played really well. And uh, I tell our kids it's the first time I thought we played a complete game the entire year. So in uh, past games, uh, you kind of mentioned, you know, even the, despite winning, um, you know, there were some things that you could have um, you, you said you know you wanted to work on on offense and defense. You know how does this game particularly? How do you see this the season coming together with everything you have been working on? Is there still more I want to do, or how close to that um, those expectations are you? You mean in reference to the season or to this game? Uh, to the season, but specifically seeing this game offensively and defensively, how close are you? Do you think um, to reaching y'all's potential? You just got to be careful because you know I haven't watched the video yet. You know, I was disappointed on the 2-3 and outs. We had such a great field position early in the game. I thought we could have put them away there. Um, that was disappointing. I, I'd already told my staff I wasn't going to be Riverboat Gambler and go for it to this. I thought they were going to have trouble scoring on us. So I was going to put the football. So we were playing, playing pretty conservative. So I was disappointed in that. Um, defensively, there's just not much to be disappointed about. I thought we, you know, we didn't tackle real well at times. Honestly, there was a few times we didn't tackle real well. We got that cleaned up on the sideline. Uh, special teams wise, uh, you know, I, we were pretty solid, I think. But I'd have to go back and you know watch that video for I, I know for sure. Roger, Coach, uh, how was how would you rate your running attack tonight? You know, since had that big 81 yard run, and then BJ Daniels, of course, coming in, you know, kind of pressing the service since Brennan Stiller and everything. But he comes in, converts seven carries, 54 yards, touchdown. You know, especially with him, how would you say that the running attack is really coming together as a unit? Yeah, it felt like we ran the ball well. I had to check. I think we had 38 carries for 261. So a little simple math there. It's probably about seven or eight you know, yards to carry. So that ain't too bad, right? Uh, you know, it, it, they, they kind of jumped it up. They did a bunch of stuff to us in the secondary back there. And I, I didn't think we threw it in coverage as well as we did last week. But that's kind of the way they played. They played a lot of coverage. They watched the same game y'all did, right? They saw us <laughs> go nuts throwing the ball last week. And I think they said, we're not watching that. So they decided to. You know, play a different way, um, but yeah, I was I was pretty pleased with our running game. I, the ball was on the ground. You know, Jalen fumbled. That was disappointing. Um, but I thought Kavori Barnes looked really good. My, my freshman came out there. You could tell he's a legit 21-5, 200 meter guy out of 
Peace, Texas. Coach, uh, official attendance was uh, 27,515. What, what's your message to the city and to the, stand, to the students and the first timers that came out today? Uh, it, it was pretty loud in there. So what, what's your message to them? We just keep getting better. Uh, Ms. Shanda gave us our midterm report of where we were. Well, I won't tell you how many else we had on our team, but we were better than we were last year. Still too many. Uh, so kind of like our crowd, you know, we just keep getting better. I mean, well, we just keep going up. So. Um, I was thrilled. It, it, they were they were loud. Our student section's awesome. It it, it made a difference in the ball game. I don't care what they say. They can say they went to Arkansas. They went to Texas. I know our crowd and our band. That, that, was, that was loud, and that's hard to it's hard to operate in that environment. There's no doubt our crowd had a huge part in the way our kids play tonight. And we're very thankful, grateful, and we watch it. And we my players. The best marketing team in the country. They retweet and tweet every doggone thing you guys put out there about Compact the Dome. So um, I'm really grateful and thankful to San Antonio for how they showed up today. Jeff, seven and zero, continuing the historic start here uh, this to this season. What what does that mean to you guys? You know, it's it's crazy. It really is just crazy. I mean, I'm I'm proud for my kids, man. They deserve it. They're they're good kids. Coach Brown, the day we were team dinner, he asked me, what do you think about tonight? And I said, man, I've got really good kids and they're really good players. And usually when you got good kids that are good players, good things happen. You know, we, we, we say the same verse every single Saturday in 2 Timothy 1-7. The Lord does not give us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And uh, that's what our kids do every Saturday. Jeff, you mentioned marketing retweeting and stuff like that. How, how do you differentiate between building a program and building a team? And given any any week, last week, this week, how much time are you speak, thinking about either one? You know, it's just a different time. You know, that's where we live. That's where all of our recruits are. That's where all my players are. It's kind of the way we communicate in this generation. So I know even my agent's like, how much do you work, son? He's like, you're, you're always doing stuff on Twitter, but it's not just it's not just for you know fan attendance. It's for recruiting. It's for perception. It's it's for you guys. It's it's for everybody to be excited, and uh, that's that's the way it is, and the, it's the way it is right now. And social media is it's the way of the world. So my players, I don't instruct them to do that. I, I do instruct them how to behave on there. Uh, and occasionally, I have to get a coach to tell somebody to delete a tweet. I don't like them taking on media members, which we had a couple of them do that last week. Uh, I don't like I don't like that, right? Y'all got a job to do. If y'all want to criticize us and be critical and pick the other team to win, that's y'all's prerogative. Uh, we don't need to be <laughs> chastising any of y'all. So that that's the hardest part is me having to monitor it because uh, I turn them loose, but they're if I had to give them a grade on that. We have way better grades on our social media behavior than our midterm grades right now. But do you ever feel like, are there enough hours in the day to do both? To, great, build, to build a program and to coach your team? It's a great question. It's a fair question. You know, um, it, I'll say this. When you're trying to flip a program, when you're trying to start one, I've used this analogy before. It's like a, rock, a rocket. You don't launch all your energies in those first two or three years. I mean, you, we, we got to give it. And, I, and I've made a commitment that I'm, I'm not going to sleep and I'm not going to stop until these first three years now. When those first three years are up, I might just collapse. Uh, I have to have a couple of weeks, but uh, I'm going full throttle, man. I, I wanna, I, we really want to get this thing off the ground. We want this thing to be something that lasts forever, not not uh, a blip in the radar. Great. Jeff, does it say something about this team to come off the dramatic win last week for the first 6 0 star and the whole eligibility and to be as focused in all phases as they were today? I agree with you. I I was worried after Tuesday's practice. I was, but I told y'all, probably I'm just an old grumpy man. I went there and got after him really good. And the Titan data did not show that. The Titan data showed our kids had one of their hardest practices of the year. Turned right around, followed up on Wednesday. That's what's great about that data. I mean, you can look and see how much energy a kid hits and how many changes of directions and speed and how much power he used, how much speed he used. So it, you know, they were, they were mature. I was more worried than they were, obviously. 
Uh, but man, we were locked in our walkthroughs and the hotel behavior, dinner, breakfast, everything. I mean, my, my leadership council, I mean, Miles Benning this morning, man, well, I want this thing buttoned up. We need to be buttoned up and ready to go for homecoming. This is a big game for us. Elevator. I hear Day Day tell one of my freshmen, man, 2.15, uh, team meeting, be down at 2 o'clock. I'm just like, I ain't got to do nothing. I mean, my kids got this. I'm just going to freaking kick back, smoke a cigar, and watch the game. <laughs> So speaking of getting things off the ground, you know, the program is just 10 years young. Um, kind of 7 0 start to this year. I mean, I mean, to be in your seat at this moment, how, do, how does that feel? You know, it, it, it's a monumental season. It was going to be just because of the 10 year anniversary, but to be 7 0 on top of that um, and, and to be the head coach at the top of it, how does that feel? I'm not so naive to not understand how important that is, um, but I'm, I'm just not going to get outside of the lane. I, I don't want a culture pillar violation issued to me by Greg and JJ. So I mean, we're, we're going to enjoy our 24 hours. And uh, I mean, about this time tomorrow night, I'll be deep into Louisiana Tech, end zone wide, tight, base down. Skip Holtz is a really good coach. They've been winning for a really long time. And uh, there's a reason he picked us for homecoming in a night game. And uh, I don't know if y'all even thought about this yet. I, my team has never had an open week. I mean, we played straight through last year. We didn't have an open week. We played seven more games in a row. I've coached my kids for a straight two seasons, and we've never had an open week. I mean, that's, that's a grind, brother. And uh, our kids don't blink. And uh, we can see the light now, but we got to, we got to go into Ruston and get one. And this is going to be, it's going to take all of us to get out of there. Get all the way back out. You talk about subdued locker room. How do you approach that? Because you want guys to celebrate, but is it another check mark in your, like these guys are expecting to do this? You know, uh, I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, our guys have a sense of, there's something about on that road, man. Those, those, those road locker room wins get them juiced. And those home locker rooms are pretty subdued. I mean, they, they really expect to win here at the Alamo Dome. I mean, we've done it now. I'm sure y'all correct me, I'm probably wrong. But we were here six times last year, we were five and one. How many times have we played this year here? Three or four? We've been here three times. So we're eight and one in the nine games we've been here. So we've only got two left. We've got to play four, right? So we're more than that. We're nine and one. So those kids just expect to win here. So ironically, this time last year is the last time we lost here as Army. So when Lowell got hurt on this day, it's one year to the day for Lowell. I was going to put Lowell in the game to take a victory snap, but they told me that if he took one snap, it would, he's going to try to medical. We're going to do our best to try to keep that kid, you know, from playing if we can. And uh, that stinks because I would love to put him out there in victory and let him take a knee. He lost his mom, you know, this week, and uh, it's actually last week. His dad's already passed away as well, and he's still not recovered from that ankle injury yet. So it's funny what a year makes, how different that makes right now. Jeff, the, uh, just the overall energy this past week, a lot of national attention, an article from The Athletic, your interview on the Jim Rome show, just feels like there's a lot of positive stuff surrounding the program right now. Can you try and describe what's going on? Man, if I didn't know better, I, I don't get nervous. Y'all know I love to talk, right? Uh, but uh, Jim Rome, man, I grew up watching Jim Rome. Rome was burning, man, and uh, I was nervous. I told my guys, I mean, I'm nervous. What if he just fronts me out for being a, a country bumpkin hit? You know, what if he just goes at me? You know, I don't know what he's going to say about my, you know, not only do I talk slow, I hear slow too, right? So, I mean, I, I didn't know what he's going to do. And, uh, man, he was so fantastic. That interview was awesome. That's a bucket list deal for me. Uh, that was really cool. I'm so happy for all that. I mean, because it's about these kids, man. And the more I'm out there getting national news, that means the more they're talking about my kids. And the more they're talking about Sincere McCormick and Rashad Wisdom and Frank Harris, that just makes me happy. That's what the game's about, those kids, man. I'm just, I'm just a guy who gets to drive the bus, JJ. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Appreciate you. God bless. Birds up. Thanks, Coach.